Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be giving you guys the best build for all 69 brawlers in the game right now. So heavily requested, especially since the addition of the two new brawlers, Hank and also Cordelius. And then also we had about 27 balance changes also to star powers and gadgets. So a lot to really dive into. So let's just jump straight into it. So as always, make sure you're using a great code. That'd be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, let's hop into it. As always, starting with a starter brawler, working our way up to the chromatics and starting with Shelly then. So clay pigeons, 100% of the time, use clay pigeons. It's so OP. But in terms of star powers, both of them are pretty decent. More often than not, I'll use Band-Aid because it helps, especially on really bad matchups. But Shell Shock is still pretty decent. And then Gears, of course, pretty much uh, all of them are useful with Shelly, but this is what I use most of the time. So Nita has two good gadgets. You have the Bear Paws gadget, which stuns opponents. That's going to be much better in a matchup like against Ash, for example, or against another aggro pick. This gadget can be really underrated, but more often than not, you'll use a shield gadget especially just to waste the opponent's ammo and push them back. Uh, Bear with me is going to be the better option on every single game mode except for Heist. As always, Hyper Bear is going to be really strong on that game mode. And then pretty much everywhere I use this build, maybe in a rare occurrence in Heist, if I'm pushing ladder, I might want to use a pet power just to get those quicker wins. But I think in competitive, I don't think I've really seen this uh, gear actually thrive. With Colt, he has two decent gadgets. Speed Loader is going to be really strong, especially in Heist to get that extra damage. Thinking of Safe Zone in particular, it's really strong while silver bullet can be pretty strong on some maps but as you guys know a lot of maps have unbreakable walls now so maybe you don't get the most value out of silver bullet anymore and then star powers he has two decent star powers depending on what type of cult player you are but if you want to focus on actually dodging the enemy's attacks with slip boots can be pretty strong but more often than not magnum special is going to be the go-to and then i never switch off these two gears all has two decent gadgets with t-bone injector that's going to be the better option in heist it's going to allow you to maybe get one or two extra shots onto the high safe. I like using it there. While Stomper is going to be better everywhere else. Just because you can confirm kills so easily with your super and gadget combination. And I use Tough Guy literally everywhere. Even in Heist. Because Bull just gets deleted in this meta. So you definitely need that extra shield. And when it comes down to gears. I think health gear is really good on Bull. Because right now he's really bad. So at least the health gear allows him to of course regen quicker. And allow him to feed his super from the enemies hitting him. And then I also like the damage gear of course because mainly you play heist you want that extra damage rock has two pretty decent gadgets with rocket laces you can escape those aggro assassins you know for example if a boss wants to grapple onto you you can use a gadget and get away safely so pretty decent and then rocket fuel can be used on maps with not many unbreakable wolves and it can allow you just to dominate the opponents a lot easier because you can uh, of course make them exposed with this gadget and then in terms of star powers both of them can feel a little bit underwhelming rocket number four is going to be probably a bit be better when it comes down to like bouncy and knock out those more passive game modes but more often than not I actually like using more rockets because you don't really reload that fourth rocket too often in my opinion and especially in heist this one's going to be better you get more damage on the safe with that super and then i never switch off these two gears primo has two decent gadgets with suplex supplement which is pretty decent against his fellow tanks you can allow him just to stun them and buy yourself more time and then astro belt can be decent in some ways especially if for example you're facing off against like a thrower or if you have like a b or a shop shoot in your composition then it can work with some good synergy in terms of star powers it can really depend on what kind of el primo player you are most people actually use meteor rush because it allows you to cycle your super a lot quicker but sometimes el fuego can be really strong to finish off really squishy brawlers and then in terms of builds then more often not i actually like using both the heal gear and the supercharge gear because you can cycle super so quickly with this gear and then maybe if you're facing the wrong matchup health gear can just allow you to feed super from the opponents and you know just heal up a lot quicker all these gadgets are pretty hard to decide which one is the better choice because sticky syrup mixer can be really strong against some aggro picks and then especially in a game mode like knockout for, for example this gadget can be really vital in gaining position and winning 1v1 gunfights. So both of them are pretty good. And then in terms of stopper house as well, both of them are pretty decent. Extra nausea is going to be really good against some squishy brawlers, giving you that extra damage. But then when, if you're in a bad matchup or if you just want to keep the pressure, medical use is really good for consistently getting that extra healing. And then I never switch off these two gears. Next up, we have Poco. So you get the most value out of tuning fork for sure. But if you play a lot of power league, I think protective tunes is a must have. You encounter so many different archetypes with this gadget and it can catch people off surprise and then in terms of star powers screeching solos probably your best bet 
But, you know, in game modes uh, like Hot Zone, for example, the capo can really work for some good synergy. And then Gears, I never switch off this build. So next up with Rosa, we have two decent gadgets. Grow Light can be really annoying, especially on Gem Grab. You can give the bushes to your Gem Carrier and just also connects bushes and make it really hard for the opponents to scout you. But on Friendly Bushes, that's probably the gadget you're going to be using most of the time, especially on maps like Sneaky Fields. You're going to get a lot of value out of this. And Plant Life is basically used all the time. Maybe Fauna Gloves can be sometimes underrated, but you get most value out of this star power for sure and in terms of gears i never swap from these two gears jesse has two useful gadgets with spark plug you can throw your turret and stun the opponents and make it a lot easier for you and your teammates to take them down so that can be really good for control but if you're in heist and you need that extra dps recoil spring is actually pretty decent i see this used quite often and then in terms of star powers energize is the only option here the other one is terrible and in terms of gears i use this build pretty much all of the time i just don't feel like i get the most value out of pet gear but if you uh, play a lot of heist on ladder for example i think you can get some really quick wins with this gear dynamite's fidget spinner actually got a buff with the last set of balance changes but i don't think that's enough to change my uh, build unfortunately maybe it's underrated in some senses but satchel charge is one of the best gadgets in the game if you're a good dynamite player this will confirm you a kill every single time and then demolition 100 of the times as well and i never switch off these two gears Tick's build is really simple last is going to be the better gadget 100 of the time it can allow you to knock back the opponents and also tank some heavy hitting shots and then well oiled pretty much 99% of the time maybe there's a few scenarios where you can use this star power but i just don't think it's worth actually buying it I mean, in terms of the builds i've never switched off this build it's 100 the best one 8-bit has two really good builds so it depends on the game mode so if you're playing gem grab then this build right here is probably going to be your best bet cheat cartridge allows you just to teleport back to to your turret and keep you safe especially when you're trying to collect gems but if you're playing a lot of heist then of course extra credit is going to be really good to confirm a lot of damage onto the high safe so plugged in it depends what kind of 8-bit player you are it gives you that extra bit of speed but more often than not i actually love boosted booster really underrated and you can just absolutely shred opponents with this star power and then when it comes down to gears you can actually get pretty much value with every single gear except for the shield gear but more often than not i will be using this build right here but then maybe on a grassy map i'll switch between the speed and the vision rico's gadget multiple launcher actually received a buff with the last set of balance changes before the bullets only used to deal 300 damage now the deal 800 i think this is a really good change maybe rico can start to become meta so i think this gadget is definitely worth it specifically in heist as well i believe you can deal around 20 percent of a high safe with this gadget so definitely an underrated one whilst bowser castle is going to be pretty good most of the time as well being able to heal up to full it's going to be pretty good so both the gadgets are really useful right now star powers 100 of the time super bouncy definitely the better option and then with gears and you can actually get away with playing every single gear with rico more often than not i will use for damage gear though but you can easily switch between all of them the only must have is a reload gear daryl has a pretty underwhelming build but both gadgets can be somewhat useful recall and rotate is going to be better in highs to cycle your super and also get that extra damage on the high save sometimes it can be useful in game modes like brawl as well to get your super quicker more often not though a lot of pros will use top barrel especially to confirm kills and it just makes it a lot easier to play a daryl then in terms of star powers 100 of the time still hoops maybe unless you're playing a map like pit stop for example which is a very base race heist map i think i just use steel hoops pretty much all of the time but in terms of builds this is definitely your best bet penny salty barrel recently received a nerf but it's definitely still the best option salty barrel is going to allow you to take down those tanks a lot easier and then also tank a lot of shots and also a good counter to brawlers like gene for example so that's going to be a better option in terms of star powers can really depend on the matchup more often than not i will be using this star power but if the opponent runs like an aggro or if you're playing a lot of brew ball master blaster is actually going to be the better star power because you can knock the ball out of the opponent's hand with this star power and then in terms of gears then i think pretty much every gear is really strong on penny i don't think pet gear is really worth it so more often than not i probably will use a build like this carl's gadget heat ejector recently received a buff but i just think the flying hook gadget is completely made for carl Maybe there's some underrated cases for this, but I just will never switch off this gadget. It's so, so strong in so many different scenarios. And then pretty much like 95% of the time, I'll use Protective Pirouette. Maybe there's some uh, other matchups where Power Throw is better, but I think Protective Pirouette more often than not is going to be your best bet. And then this is probably going to be your best build. Sometimes you want to use the shield gear for a little bit of extra cushioning, 
but I think this is the best build. Jackie's build is super simple. So in terms of gadgets, only one gadget you want to use and that's the booster gadget. Gives you that extra bit of speed. Whilst rebuild used to be somewhat underrated, but now with unbreakable walls, you don't even need this gadget. So pretty useful, uh, useless, sorry, in this meta. And then in terms of star powers, hardy hard hat. Uh, it's really, really bad. Counter crush is going to be your best bet, especially because Jackie really just lacks a damage output. So you definitely need Counter Crusher to help you in that category. Then in terms of gears, I never really switch off of these gears because you really need the extra speed and damage with Jackie. So one of Gus's gadgets and star powers recently received a buff, but I don't think his build has actually changed Cookie Popper. It's just way too strong, especially in game modes where you really need to confirm a kill. But not only that, I just think his ghosts actually have a lot more pressure if you run this gadget. Was this one, you can actually, you know, especially if you use the shield gear, she doesn't take any health off you but I, do, I don't know i just i've tried it so much and i don't think his build has changed too much i think this pairs really well this star power pairs really well with any type of aggro but just overall pairs well with everyone the extra 25 percent damage is really strong whilst this one it gives you the extra healing but again after trying it out a lot especially in power league i just don't feel like there's any like scenarios or 1v1s where that extra healing or just getting the ghost for example really wins it a 1v1 it never actually does that i've played ghost so much and this has to be his best build for sure and then in terms of gears can really depend on the map Bo has two pretty underwhelming gadgets with super totem recently when it got reworked i just don't think this gadget really provides too much value but then you also have trip wide which sometimes can catch your enemies off guard but overall i don't really like either of these gadgets that can just be personal preference snare bear is going to be your best bet pretty much all of the time but there are a few scenarios specifically on maps like infinite doom the new uh, bounty map that can be pretty strong on that map and in terms of gears i pretty much don't switch off of this uh, build right here mz's gadget acid spray recently received a buff but i don't think that's gonna make the switch for me just because without her friend zoner she gets countered way too easily so i'll be st sticking with friend zoner definitely going to be your best bet but in terms of stop house it can depend on which m's player you are and maybe the matchup as well because needing that extra damage specifically against tanks bad karma is going to be better but if you're a type of m's player that likes to make pop-off plays with her super and hype can be really good and then in terms of best gears i never switch away from these two gears Stu has a really flexible build where he has two strong gadgets and star powers so speed zone it's going to be really good on really defensive maps you're thinking a lot of hot zone maps but also just really passive maps this gadget is going to allow you to get so much value and specifically allow you and your teammate to win their specific matchup giving you that extra bit of speed and then breakthrough can be really strong on certain maps being able to break the wall and then creating more goal scoring opportunities but also allowing you to finish off opponents or cycle your super a lot easier then in terms of soul powers pretty much 95 percent of the time i'll go gas heal but it might be some rare occasions where zero drag can be pretty strong specifically i don't know for example if like a mortis or if you're facing off against an aggro pick zero drag can actually allow you to get away from that matchup get away from your counters a lot easier and then in terms of gears more than not i actually use this setup for but you can easily switch to the damage gear as well. But has two versatile gadgets. More often than not, I'll use homemade recipe, especially on uh, bounty, for example. But if I'm playing ladder, I actually uh, pick this gadget a lot because she's so vulnerable to any sort of aggro. So I'd rather just go with auto aimer. Pretty much all of the time, I use snappy sniping. I know there's some people that like picking ambush on some bounty maps, but still, I just prefer snappy sniping because it allows you to dominate a, a lot more against maybe some tankier options that might have countered you in the past. And then in terms of gears, it really just depends on what map you play. Tapam recently received a brand new mythic gear and it's actually pretty strong, but in terms of gadgets, Scrap Sucker is going to be your best bet 100% of the time. The other gadgets just pointless same with star powers as well mama squeeze is going to be your better option 100 of the time and then in terms of gears the mythic gear is actually pretty powerful especially when you're playing pam you typically play pam against low dps brawlers like Stu, for example so the extra healing is going to make it even harder for them to kill you and your teammates in that turret and then in terms of gears it can really depend on what map you're playing whether it's open or whether there's a lot of bushes but more often than not vision gear is going to be your best bet so frank's build has changed a little bit in the meta just because there's a lot of shelly right so active noise cancelling is actually probably your best bet if you're playing ladder again depends what frank player you are but there's just shelly everywhere so at least this allows you to get a super off onto her without it being cancelled 
whilst irresistible attraction i actually like using more often not as well just because it gives you that extra bit of damage sponge pretty much all of the time but in terms of gears can depend on whether you're playing a grass team map but this should be your best bet bb's gadget extra sticky recently received a buff but i think the booster gadget is just way too strong giving you that extra healing when you push into the opponents but then in terms of star powers it can depend on the matchup or just what type of bb player you are i'm actually starting to like the home run one a little bit better but if you're playing on a grassy map you may as well use batting stance and use the speed gear but if you're trying to counter more sharpshooters or just uh, of course get a little bit of extra movement speed then home run can be good and then just depending on what matchup you have i think you can get good use out of like four of the gears bees gadget rattled hive recently received a buff as well and i've actually started to use it a lot more specifically on game modes like brewable but more often than not i'll still use honey molasses because it allows you to tank fellow sharpshooters shots but also just be really annoying for the opponents if you manage to plant that behind a wall uh, but in terms of star powers a lot of people really like insta b load but i think pretty much 99% of pros use honeycomb just because it allows you to get extra pressure onto the map and typically b is a bit too squishy so this can allow you to not get countered as easily and then in terms of gears i think this is the best setup for sure unless of course you're playing on a grassy map so nanny's build can really differ on the game mode that you play on because if you're on heist for example you want to be swapping this build to the warp blast and also the tempered steel star power or maybe a brawl as well but if you're playing like knockout or also bounty you want to be using this build because return to sender it's really strong against those fellow sharpshooters like piper for example and then autofocus giving you that extra amount of damage specifically when the meta around a knockout and bounty is really squishy at brawlers then it's going to allow you to get the kill and then in terms of gears i pretty much run this setup all of the time specifically the super well the supercharged gear because it allows you to cycle your super a lot easier Edgar has two pretty decent gadgets with let's fly basically gives you a free super and most people actually use this gadget now because you have to wait like 30 seconds or so to get your super automatically it's just way too long it leaves your teammates in the 2v3 so let's fly is definitely the go-to in this meta but hardcore can definitely give you some good value specifically because edgar is really squishy it could depend on what edgar player you are and then in terms of star powers it really does depend on the matchup as well i actually like using fisticuffs but some people use hard landing as well so again just depending on what edgar player you are because i don't think really either of them make too much of a difference to edgar's kit and then i actually like using the supercharged gear and the uh, shield gear at the moment some people really disagree and like using the damage gear instead it's just up to you so griff's build is super simple piggy bank literally all of the time the other gadget is one of the worst inside of a game and then in terms of star powers business resilience all of the time it's such a good star power for griff especially when you're really weak you're going to be able to recover a lot of hp and literally everywhere i use this gear so grom has two pretty decent gadgets especially since infinite doom came into the game i've seen a lot of people get actually some really good use out of watchtower but i would say 95% of the time you wouldn't use radio check because if the opponent is unaware you can pretty much get a really quick takedown with this gadget in terms of star powers 100% of the time use x factor extra bit of damage really strong and then more often than not i'll be using this setup right here maybe on a grassy map i'll switch to the speed gear instead bonnie's gadget crash test recently received a buff allowing you to deal extra damage but i still think it's one of the worst gadgets in the game and also sugar rush is one of the best gadgets in the game because giving you that extra movement speed and reload speed is just so strong but in terms of star powers i use this 100 percent of the time as well in terms of gears it can depend really on the map but you want to be using the heal gear and the damage gear pretty much all of the time next up we have one of the newest brawlers in the game in hank and his best build so barricade is going to be the best gadget i see pretty much everyone use this one but you can get sometimes some value out of this one uh, but barricade is going to be your best bet then in terms of star powers this one is definitely the better star power this one i feel like could be a little bit underrated on some maps with a lot of walls but still the extra movement speed just allows you to close the gap between you and your opponents and get that extra damage then in terms of gears i think this is the best build for him but you can definitely make a case for the heal gear as well mortis's gadget combo spinner recently received a buff to its damage just by about 200 damage i don't think this has actually made me want to switch my gadget preference maybe on knockout and bounty this can uh, be really good for that extra bit of damage but survival shovel will actually allow you to psych your super a lot more with mortis and that's what you really need in this meta but again i won't be discouraged like i won't discourage you guys from trying out the new combo spinner and then in terms of star powers then this one's pretty 
really interesting because creepy harvest most people use this one specifically in brewable but i actually would make a really good case for coiled snake a lot of people are starting to try it out a lot more for me personally i like coiled snake a little bit more and in terms of gears then it can really depend on the matchup but this should be your best bet Taurus gadget choice is really simple support from beyond pretty much all of the time because this gadget allows you to tank so many shots but not only that it scouts opponents in bushes as well so there's not really too much point in using this gadget right here in terms of star powers it can just depend on the matchup again black portal is going to be really good against those sharpshooters or just opponents with really slow reload speed because then it takes them ages to take down that pet but i prefer healing shade myself because there'll be an opportunity where that healing pet will be behind you and your teammates and it can just provide so much healing in terms of gears pretty much i stay on this build all of the time recently she got a pet power gear which does well it does help with the healing shade giving you an extra bit of healing but i just don't think it's really worth it maybe if you're playing heist it can be worth it but still i would never play tara in heist jeans build is super simple lamp blowout pretty much everywhere except for really long range maps or specifically in knockout and bounty you want to be using vengeful spirits it's not really the best gadget but at least it can help with that chip damage and then in terms of star powers magic puffs 100 of the time and in terms of gears i pretty much use this setup all of the time so now moving on to max's best build we have phase shifter which is 100 the best gadget and in terms of star powers again it can depend on what you really prefer if you're playing gem grab more often than not you want to be using a supercharged star power or even rubble just giving you that extra bit of movement especially with the super that's gonna be really good but runner gun can also be pretty solid as well specifically if you're facing off against a lot of tanks giving you that extra dps but in terms of build i'm always switching up on her gears literally every single gear is really strong with max but i prefer this one probably the most mr p's build is really simple service belt is going to be maybe a little bit better in gamers like knockout just because the games are quite quick and you rarely get your super so service belt can be good against those shop shooters but portal reinforcements pretty much 99 percent of the time allowing you to waste a lot more ammo from the opponents and same with revolving door i use this all of the time to remove ammo from from the opponents giving you a little bit of extra hp on your porters in terms of the gears pretty much all of the time i use this setup maybe on a grass team up i'll switch to vision gear but you don't get any value out of the pet power gear whatsoever sprout's best build is super simple transplant's going to be your best bet most of the time so you can really block off the opponents and be super annoying and also overgrowth as well allowing you to hit shots a lot easier but if you're on a really grassy map, for example, like Flare and Phoenix, you're going to be able to switch this build right here. So you're a little bit tankier in that 1v1 matchup. And then in terms of gears, you want to use supercharged gear all of the time because it allows you to get your super to, from five shots to four shots. So that's super vital for a brawler like Sprout. And then it can just matter to you what gear you use whether it's the damage one or the shield gear orange's best build is super simple as well booster shots it's going to be your best bet pretty much 95 percent of the time it allows you to cycle your super a lot easier and also against tanks giving you that extra bit of damage output while shot in the arm can sometimes be okay uh definitely still underrated melee is going to be your best bet pretty much all of the time it's going to be really annoying especially on the higher hp brawlers we're going to stop that regen for what nine seconds pretty insane and then injection can be actually underrated in some circumstances especially if you're playing against like a tara with her pets or roughs with sandbags can be good in that instance and in terms of gears i never switch away from these ones squeak stop power chain reaction recently received a buff and it's really made squeak actually one of the better brawlers in the game right now i'm starting to enjoy him a lot more because of this buff so it's gone from 10 percent to 20 percent really good against squishier brawlers and then super sticky can be good against specifically probably tankier options because you can cycle your super a lot better and also just allow you to confirm kills a lot better but i'm actually using chain reaction more often than not now and then in terms of gadgets wind up can actually be pretty underrated with the chain reaction star power but residue is just so strong one of the best gadgets in the game i use this like 99 percent of the time and then gears i rarely swap from these two gears great star power fake injury recently received a buff taking it from 25 percent in damage reduction to 50 percent really strong in bounty and knockout for example but new perspective i use this more often than not still the extra thousand healing to you and your teammates is really strong when you teleport walking cane is going to be your best bet 99 of the time maybe there's a rare scenario where grand piano you definitely need but 
I use walking cane, literally just the same thing, but also confirms it at kill. And then also you have like really good gears with uh, gray, but more, more often than not, I'll be using this setup. Willow's gadget choice is actually pretty difficult because Spellbound is really strong, especially because Willow struggles to get some really quick DPS, just the way her mechanics work right. This can be really good to finish off kills as well, but dive can actually be really underrated and can actually catch the opponent's like by surprise i see people use dive quite often so kind of up to you there but in terms of star powers i think love is blind is actually the better one because you may not see the value in this but uh reducing the riddle speed by 25 percent is actually pretty good whilst obsession it's actually pretty rare that you really like actually use your super onto someone i don't really get too much value out of his star power and in terms of gears this is definitely the best setup to have spikes build recently received two buffs which actually makes the choice between his star power and gadgets pretty interesting so popping pink cushions recently received a buff to the damage and especially in heist i think you can do like 30 to 40 percent with this gadget it's absolutely insane the amount of damage you do so definitely in heist this is going to be your go-to all of the time whilst life plant i think is also just pretty good everywhere and also popping pink cushions is actually a lot more usable against those tankier options now i've definitely seen a lot more people use it Curple is going to be your best bet more often than not especially against brothers who you know you can hit especially from afar but fertilize is also really underrated i've seen this use a lot in heist and just survivability i think the star power could actually be really strong right now so definitely give fertilize a try because it recently received a buff and then in terms of gears i see pretty much everyone use this setup but if you're playing on heist, of course, you want to swap out to the damage gear. Next up, we have one of the best builds in the game with Slow and Toxin being one of the best gadgets in the game. I use this 100% of the time. And same with Extra Toxic, one of the best star powers in the game. I use this 100% of the time. Then in terms of gears, then more often than not, I'll be using this setup right here. But maybe on a really grassy map, I'll probably swap the uh, shield gear for the speed gear. Next up, we have Leon and his build is pretty simple. Lollipop Drop is going to be the better gadget every single time. And then in terms of star power, and visit hill for me is going to be your go-to pretty much everywhere but if you're on a really long range map and you want to make use out of your super and taking down people quickly then smoke trails can be somewhat underrated i've seen this used quite often on like shooting star for example and in terms of gears i feel like the mythic gear is really underwhelming i still use it sometimes but an extra second longer i'd rather just get a lot more value out of the other gears for example where you can get some extra speed a lot of times i use this setup right here especially to give you that little bit of extra shield when you go in on brawlers sandy's gadget sleep simulator recently received a buff but this isn't gonna make me make the switch just because sweet dreams fundamentally is just so insane the sun mechanic allows you to counter your counters in a sense like without it you know brawlers like buzz or any assassins are just going to destroy sandy so easily then in terms of star powers if it's a really open map you can go with healing winds but on a grassy map rude sand's definitely going to be your best bet and then pretty much i never switch from this build because the mythic gear is pretty much one of the worst things in the game amber's gadget dancing flames finally received a buff but still i think the other gadget just perfectly suits her build overall and it's just really awkward to get consistent damage with dancing flames so i'm still using fire starters all of the time because you want that perfect synergy with the world flames star power but not only that you've also got that extra speed boost so you can easily capitalize and take down opponents really fast within those three seconds and then wild flames that's going to be the way you play amber right you want to stick around your supers build up another super and just block off the opponents a lot more whilst this star power I don't really use too often me personally i find it really awkward i've seen a few people get some good value out of it and then in terms of the gears then so both the mythic gear and the re reload gear is going to be your best bet with amber next up we have a megs build so jolting vaults is still going to be her better gadget even though recently received a nerf i think this is still going to be your best bet but there are some underrated uses for toolbox especially if you're facing off against like a sharpshooter it can allow you to tank a shot you know like a b3k and it's also good to protect yourself against a gina pool so pretty underrated one to have in your back pocket force field has been heavily nerfed and it's not really the best right now only 10 seconds i just use heavy metal more often than not now you know it's, it's bizarre right literally it's been one of the worst uh star powers in the game for a long time but a lot of aggro picks against mega right now to counter her like carl like buzz and this star power allows you to at least knock them back and give you a fighting chance and the gears no questions asked i pretty much use this setup 
all of the time. Chester's best build is pretty simple. Spicy Dice is going to be your better choice for a gadget. Just because if you get a terrible super, at least you can swap it and perhaps get a better one. You know, candy beans can sometimes be pretty good, but then it's really RNGs. So sometimes it can be just completely useless. You get what I mean? So I'd rather just go with Spicy Dice. At least you can switch if you get uh, the mini Lou uh, Ice Rink. Uh, in terms of star powers, Bella Mania 100% of the time. And then in terms of gears, I never swap from this set. Both of Gale's gadgets are actually pretty useful. You have a Twister, which is going to be really good against some aggro picks. But then there's some maps in the game like Open Zone and maybe even like Ring of Fire, which allows you to get into the zone a lot quicker. Springer Jets can be underrated in some instances, but Twister definitely going to be your better bet. And then Blustery Blow is going to be your best choice pretty much all of the time, especially in maps with a lot of walls being able to stun the opponents. But Freezing Snow can actually be really underrated, especially on some really long range maps like Open Zone again. And then in terms of gears, I pretty much run this all of the time. But of course, Speed Gear is going to be really strong on Gale on those grassy maps. Surge's Gadget Power Shield recently received a nerf, and I think it's really awkward to get value out of this consistently. So maybe on ladder i might use it especially on brew ball but i think power surge is definitely a better gadget overall right now because you're going to be stuck on that first level quite often in this meta so power surge is going to be your best bet serve ice cold all of the time and then in terms of gears i pretty much run this setup all of the time next up we have colette's best build so gotcha is going to be the better gadget overall for sure 100 percent of the time giving you that extra bit of healing then in terms of star powers i'm always torn between which one to use when i'm playing like brew ball or gem grab but more often than not i don't really like push it to to be honest just because i feel like when i do super the opponent they end up just killing me when i super them so maybe you have to choose your supers wisely a lot more with push it but can be really strong against aggro picks but i like mass attack specifically in heist to give you that extra bit of shield and then in terms of gears then this is going to be your best bet so lose build is super simple we want the second gadget 100 of the time and then also hyperthermia 100 of the time as well no questions asked for this one in terms of gears you 100 need the supercharged gear because it allows you to cycle super with two pieces of ammo instead of three and that's going to allow you just to block off the opponents a lot easier and then a damage gear also to pair with that rough best build is super simple air support is going to push the opponents back and allow you to gain uh, positioning on the map really easily and then sandbags is going to be good against sharpshooters but more often than not uh, it's not going to be the best for you and then in terms of star powers air superiority all of the time because it's going to allow you to break open them up pretty easily but i've also seen some cheesy strategies with this one specifically on really passive maps or game modes like knockout but you probably get the most value out of air superiority and then in terms of gears you can get value out of pretty much all of them depending on the map l star power grounded recently received a buff but it doesn't really do anything the star power is still one of the worst in the game easily right now whilst positive feedback at least gives you that extra bit of shield and it can allow you to go a lot more aggressive specifically against her fellow sharpshooters and then in terms of gadgets nest egg 100 of the time sometimes i go reverse polarity just to have a little bit of fun sometimes it can be underrated on game modes like knockout to get you a little bit of pressure but your best bet is definitely nest egg specifically if you're playing hot zone it can confirm so many kills and then in terms of gears i more often than not use this setup right here but she's pretty good with all of her gears. Because this best build is super simple. The first gadget is going to be your best choice pretty much all of the time. There are some instances where X-ray shades is going to be really underrated. Especially on super grassy maps. But I still feel like you don't really need that gadget. This one's going to be really good in cycling your supers. Ice shop is going to be the best choice 100% of the time. I just feel like you're really limited in range if you switch to the other star power. And in terms of gears, just depends on what map you play. Ash recently received a buff to both his second star power and gadget. But I don't think it's really made me want to make the switch. In terms of gadgets, definitely chill pill. It's going to be your best bet because you get the synergy with the rats. What most people do is that when they're really low HP, they can throw their rats out. They can pop this gadget and then the rats help you build up the rage back up whilst you've also healed like 2,500. So chill pill is going to be better. Maybe this one could be underrated. We'll have to test it out more, but I don't really like it. In terms of star powers, I still feel like first bash is going to be your best bet. 
maybe this one can be underrated in some matchups but i'm kind of yet to figure that one out so first bash for me and in terms of best build this is what all the pros use 100 percent of the time lotus star power sealed with a kiss recently received a buff an extra 50 healing per shot which i think can be really underrated and maybe this starts to become the better one but still i feel like more people use improvise just for that extra bit of damage specifically because you only really see lola in heist right now maybe hot zone this stop power probably is the better one in terms of gadgets freeze frame 100 percent of the time really easy choice right there in terms of gears you need reload speed gear on her all of the time and then it can depend on what map you're on right because vision gear can get a lot of value on a map like gem fort for example but then more often than not i do use for damage and the reload gear because i'm playing lola in heist a lot thanks gadget corn food recently received a buff but i don't think that's really going to make the switch in terms of which gadget to use just because it's not really still confirmed damage all of the time it's a little bit awkward this gadget whilst roundhouse kick allows you to confirm kills so many times and also gives you that breathing space in so many situations and also in terms of best star powers i think divine soul is going to be your best bet pretty much all of the time if you want to make some fr uh, flashy plays then maybe fresh kicks can be somewhat useful but it's only really good against squishy brawlers because rarely you're going to get below that 1500 threshold to then get your super back in terms of gears this is going to be your best bet next up we have a really easy setup with eve so gotta go is going to be your best bet 100 percent of the time motherly love is yet to receive a rework unfortunately in terms of star powers and unnatural order is going to be your best bet because you get more consistent damage but happy surprise can actually be underrated against fellow sharpshooters because it's going to be really annoying for them to constantly shoot those hatchlings and in terms of gears then mythic gears are really strong gears to have an extra hatchling can be so annoying for the opponents and same with reload gear so this is going to be the setup i use all of the time janet's gadget dropped the base recently received a nerf so it's not really as strong as it used to be but it's still really annoying for the opponents to deal with probably the best bet still backstage pass can be underrated in some game modes like knockout or bounty but i'll pretty much use drop the base all of the time specifically as well it's a good counter to other strong brawlers in her best game mode like gene for example and in terms of stop hours vocal warm-up is going to be your best bet all of the time and then in terms of gears it really does depend on what map you play next up we have a really simple build because fat splatter is going to be your best bet 100 percent of the time in terms of star powers ink refills you really need this star power 100 percent of the time as well it literally should be a baseline star power in terms of your best gears then it can be up to you i like using this setup right here because you can cycle supers a lot quicker but you might want to use some of the other gears. Sam's best build is super simple. Nothing has changed here. Magnetic field 100% of the time. This gadget just feels really awkward. Probably needs a rework. In terms of star powers, hard to recovery. It should literally be baseline as well because it's just completely made for the way Sam's played. Whilst this star power, again, needs a rework. It's just completely unusable. In terms of gears, this is what I use more often than not. But maybe if it's a grassy map, I'll probably will switch to the speed gear. Next up, we have a buster. So utility belt recently received a buff to the amount of healing it has to you and your allies but i don't think this is made for switch because slow-mo replay allows you to counter some of your counters if you get what i mean and also just allows you to confirm a kill pretty easily if you pull someone with this gadget you basically confirm the kill every single time so i love this gadget for sure in terms of star powers and i don't really feel like any of them are that strong right like this one can be pretty good against maybe some of your counters like a spike super for example it allows you to get out of that spike super once you super i, I don't know both of them are just pretty uh, meh for me in terms of gears this is probably your best bet mandy star power hard candy recently received a buff from a 20 percent shield to 30 percent but mandy feels unplayable without her in my sight star power you literally need the star power or she's probably the worst brawler in the game not even joking in terms of gadgets i think both of them can be pretty underrated because caramelize can confirm your kills and also make your supers a lot easier to hit but then also there's some maps which are really like cookie crumbs you know with a lot of walls on the map or maybe if you're playing knockout this can actually surprise the opponents and confirm kills pretty easily and in terms of gears i pretty much never switch from this build next up we have rt best build so hacks is the best gadget 100 percent of the time this is probably the worst gadget in the game in terms of star powers i think most people actually use recording just because maybe in the off chance you use your super i know you don't actually use it that often 
it can give you a 20 percent shield which is actually really good and specifically on game modes like bounty it's going to be really hard but also knockout as well it's going to be really hard for the opponents to take you down whilst quick maths can sometimes be really annoying for the opponents especially just on some other game modes as well but recording probably the better option more often than not in terms of the gears i think more often i probably use this setup but if you're playing on a more defensive game mode, I'll probably will swap to something like this. Izzy recently received a few buffs with the last set of balance changes and her best build has changed somewhat just because Disengage now actually dashes forward. That's always going to be the best gadget for sure because you can combine this with your super and just make so many amazing plays. And then in terms of star powers, I use Tremors pretty much all of the time because that extra slow with your super can allow you to hit more shots and cycle your super even better. But Pinpoint Precision has been buffed and it actually deals a lot of damage. So maybe if you're playing a more open map, you probably actually get more value out of its star power. But still, I like Tremors a lot more. And in terms of the gears, uh, it can depend on what map you play. You can get value out of pretty much all of them. And finally, moving on to the brand new brawler in the game, Cordelius and his best build. So after playing Cordelius on Brawl a lot, I really liked replanting specifically in a Cord Cordelius 1v1. It just allows you, especially when you're in the Shadow Realm, it allows you to also just pounce onto opponents a lot quicker. In a 1v1 as well, say if the opponent's using Poison Mushroom, you can actually dodge that mute with the jump. So I think I made a lot of people realize that it, like this gadget is actually really underrated and probably the better one. Whilst Poison Mushroom is probably a really strong gadget on maps with a lot of grass because say for example, you've got like a bull or someone sneaking up to you, you can just mute them really easily and just confirm a kill and cycle your super quickly. So I think both of them are pretty good. In terms of star powers, I feel like some people like the Mushroom Kingdom one because of those mushrooms uh, give you that extra healing when you're in the Shadow Realm. But I just feel like they're in awkward spots. It's pretty awkward to pick up and get consistent healing from them. Whilst Combo Shrooms guarantees you extra damage pretty much every single time. So I really like this star power specifically when you want to shred someone as quickly as possible in the 1v1 in the Shadow Realm. And then in terms of gears, I think I've got the most value out of this setup right here. But of course, it wouldn't hurt switching to like the speed gear on a grassy map because then he'll be super fast. All right, guys, it's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one. So it took me a long time to really look at the data, try and see what people are starting to use since the new buffs. But honestly, I don't think too much has really changed in terms of the best builds here. Just because I think a lot of Brawler's best gadget or best star power are just fundamentally too strong they did a lot of buffs but they didn't also do nerfs to the better gadgets so still feel like there's a lot of disparity in some of the best builds you know for example like bell's grounded star power that buff hasn't really done anything has it like literally hasn't done a single thing same with mandy's star power as well the other star power is just way too strong so still probably looking for a lot more uh reworks to some of the star powers but then there were also some really underrated changes like fertilize for example I think this actually might be one of the better star powers in the game now giving that extra 1000 healing can actually allow you to survive a lot easier and this gadget also pretty underrated but anyways that's gonna be it for today's video super long one hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time